Bruchim Aboim. The uh, topic today, I think, is a very important comp- topic that we all run into. It becomes a major part of our lives. Teachers. And the um, Pirkei Avot says, Asei Lecha Rav, make for yourself a teacher. And this really begins, um, interestingly enough, at birth. We know that when the Jews were in the desert, one of the the reason why they did had to wander in the desert for 40 years is because Moshe Benu sent the spies, and there were 12, into the land, and they came back and brought an evil report about the land. There were all kinds of problems. People cried. And for that reason, they were made to uh, wander in the desert for 40 years. And yet Yoshua, before he entered the land for, after the 40 years, sent in two spies uh, that were Kalev and Pinchas, And they came back with the proper information, and they were very successful. And I really believe that God Almighty sends two spies in front of every child that comes into this world, mother and a father. And it becomes the mission of these two spies to spy out the land, this world, and when the child is born, to inform them of the journey that awaits them and all of the pitfalls they may have and all of the minds that they have to avoid Uh, instructing them of what they've learned in spying out the land before they were born. So the first teachers that we really have, even although interestingly enough, they say that in the womb a child is taught all of the Torah, and yet there's a mark on all of our lips just above the lip that a finger fits. And it says that uh, the angel who teaches in the womb the child all of the Torah and before you're born, the angel touches it just below. In fact, your, na- your nose is shaped like a shin. It all, it's holiness, according to Kabbalah, goes into your nostrils. It says, V'yipo of ruach that God breathed into man the breath of life, not into his mouth, into his nostrils. The only one of the senses that Adam did not profane when he ate from the tree of knowledge out of the five senses. So the angel teaches all the Torah, then touches the baby before it's born. And the baby forgets everything. And Why? It's an interesting thing. It may well be because it's given without any effort. If you don't put any effort into learning, you really don't have a chance of remembering anything. That part of remembering is basically, unless you have a photographic memory, which very few of us have, um, you have to really work at availing yourself of what a teacher has to teach. I think the early teachers that we have are uh, women, and even more so, today than ever before. Um, in a religious society, um, even though a boy would be brought up by his mother, in fact, at the age of three, his hair is kept long, his mother kind of treats him like a little girl, and uh, it's God's gift that she really wanted a daughter, so God says play with him till the age of three. But at the age of three in olden times, the boy was really given over to his father and started schooling at five, and that was with male teachers. Uh, the early teachers were not females. In today's society, you may not run into a male teacher until you hit junior high. You may go through all of grade school with female teachers. There's a whole theory about the sissification of the American male that becomes female values, female influences, and all of this that has something to do with the lack of masculinity, that the male role model is not there. But again, the home can counteract but it is an interesting theory on that basis. Um, I grew up without a father, and uh, I did go to yeshiva. And I guess my early um, role models were rabbis. So it was an interesting thing. And back then was before children were born with lawyers, uh, so rabbis could be very strict. And I did get slapped a few times by a few rabbis (laughs) here and there. Uh, But again, it was a different age and a different time. And uh, although I deserved every one I got and probably got away with a few that I didn't. But, um, but what's interesting is that teachers, a teacher's job is really not to mold a um, student. It's not for a teacher to change a student. Uh, the Torah, it's interesting that the Torah uses the term, Eloke Avraham, Eloke Yitzhak, Eloke Yaakov. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob where it could just have said the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So why the God of, the God of, the God of, as we say in the Shemona Esrei, three times a day, every day of the year. 
And the answer given is because each one of the forefathers was unique. Abraham, the paradigm of kindness, Yitzhak of severity, toughness, and Yaakov, the blend of the two, knowing which hand, side of the hand to use to stroke or to hit. And this became the blending uh, term called Teferis beauty or truth. But each one was unique. And we see of Eliezer, the servant of Abraham, he became so much like Abraham, he so admired him, that he took on all of his traits, he even looked like Abraham. And yet Abraham wasn't happy with him. Didn't want his daughter to, his, Yitzhak to marry his daughter, even though he was righteous. Because what he was was a duplication of his master. It's much like a jigsaw puzzle. We are all parts of the sheen of divinity of God. It's incumbent upon each one of us to fulfill our mission, to be who we are, to fill our uniqueness, to be able to fill that spot in the jigsaw puzzle. If you have two identical pieces of a puzzle, you throw the second one away. It's useless. And our job, and the job of a teacher, is to cultivate those qualities that a, that a, a child has, a student, and to develop those, to try to find that and find a way to make it bloom, to make it special, to, for him to find his own way. Because there is no one way. There is a basic street, but still, there are different ways. In fact, it says at the Garden of Eden, there were 13 roads that led to it. And there were different ways for different people. Not everybody gets there the same way. It's just a matter of getting there. Now, the Baal Shem Tov says that everything that we see has a purpose. He told the students that they went out and they saw the Gentiles cutting a cross in the ice. And they couldn't figure out why they saw that. And they went back and they said, Rebbe, what does that teach us? And he says that even ice can be used as something cold. You can make something like that negative. Even that can be used in a negative way. That a person always has to have warmth in everything that he does and everything he sees. Now, the best of teachers really teach from the heart. Words from the heart go to the heart. And there are, some of us are lucky enough to really look back on our lives and remember a teacher. It's unusual to remember many, but there is, if you're fortunate, you find someone and he becomes a mentor of sorts. And it's interesting in the fact that sometimes you outgrow that teacher, which is okay. You can have a great teacher that sets you on the road and then passes you on to another teacher. You can have brilliant people. I had some in college that were brilliant. They were just lousy teachers. Uh, they put you to sleep. They didn't have the ability. Because there's also an art in being able to make it interesting so that you can make it, it's like food. Why, do, why does a supermarket bother making displays? There's actually you know, window, window dressers that make things for people walking by to want to come into a store. Same thing with teaching and giving things over. Now, one of the ways that we're taught also is by our peers, that we learn from people that we associate with. Um, Morris says you walk into a perfume store, buy nothing, you come out smelling better. An outhouse would be the same thing. It'd be a negative smell. Children don't understand it. We, I know when I was younger, people told me things about it. I really found it very, actually negative. I couldn't figure out why they were so worried. And then you become older and a parent and you realize how important peers are. Everyone knows that say no to drugs, smoking. Why do people smoke? You teach yourself to kill yourself. It's amazing. So why bother doing that? And the answer is peer pressure, that you're around other people that smoke and you wind up doing the same. Only because if you're, around, if you're around a group of people that do not smoke, the odds are you won't smoke just because of peer pressure. Another thing that we learn from is experience. Experience is the greatest teacher of all. Um, I always say that a smart person learns from his mistakes, <laughs> but a brilliant person learns from someone else's. And this becomes the key. You don't have to step into every pothole to figure out something's wrong with it. Now, one of the things that we're afraid of is making mistakes. And it's really not a problem. We learn more from mistakes than we do from failure than we do from success. You know, good judgment comes from experience. Experience comes from bad judgment. And when you learn it yourself and you've made a mistake, put your hand in a fire once, 
you're not going to put your hand back in a fire because you get burned. In fact, people complain about pain. Pain is the greatest friend you have. You're not going to do that twice. If not for pain, you're going to keep your hand in that fire. And what you find out in life, there are other types of fires. Anger is one of them. Why hold on to a hot pot? Anytime you're angry, what you're holding on to is a hot pot. Let it go. The next day, you can handle situations that seem so awful initially that become nothing the next day and cooler heads prevail. The Rebbe says, in fact, that everyone's a teacher. And that's important to know and important to remember. Because when it says, Asei l'cha rav, which we translate to mean make for yourself a teacher, which means find someone who's a mentor for you that you can follow, that you can look, look up to, someone you can have a litmus test, check, a check, check on to find out where you're going and how you're doing. But it also means that you yourself should be a teacher. Because regardless of who you are and where you are, you know something that someone else doesn't know. If it's only the Aleph base, there's someone who doesn't know Aleph base. So teach someone else. And really the truth of the matter is, and I'm a witness to it, I've learned more from people that I've taught than any place else. I've had questions in my mind. Someone once came up to me and asked me a question, and I smiled at the person, and I said, I've had that question in my mind forever, and I don't know the answer. And five minutes later, I went over to the person, and I gave him the answer. Somehow it stimulated my mind in a way that had not been done before, and amazingly, God, inspiration, whatever, that I found the answer to the question, which made us both feel good. But it's a crazy thing. There was a person who wrote, a wise man, that I've had teachers in my life who taught me important things. I've learned to be silent from those that are overly talkative. I've learned to be tolerant from those who are impatient. And to be fair and kind from those who are mean and unruly. Yet strangely, I feel no gratitude to these teachers. You learn a lot by just living and watching how something looks on someone else. There was a gentleman in my synagogue who had a son. He was difficult. He was difficult. And I watched and listened, and I didn't want to, how this father berated his son, yelled at him, and embarrassed him. And when I saw that, I made up my mind, I don't care what my son would ever do, I would never, ever do that. Because there's no excuse to do that. You will never gain anything. It, even if it's right, there's a Yiddish saying that says, it pasnit. It just doesn't fit. It's just not the proper thing to do. So sometimes being right is wrong. True, you need to reprimand a child. You need to, but there's a better way to do it. And to embarrass a child, to, to let that anger go in public. And truth is, even in private, but especially in public, looks so dirty, looks so bad, that for me it was a great lesson that nothing could have been clearer. That if we have a saying in Hebrew, Ain, Ain Shmiya Korea, that hearing something is not like seeing something. We see in the Torah, it mentions all the time, the Ene Kol Yisrael, before the eyes of all of Israel, that all that we believe is by eyewitness report. We saw it. Our ancestors saw it and was passed on. When you see something that's negative, you see somebody doing something, even though you understand it, it just doesn't look right. And it's a shame that the best teacher sometimes that we have is an enemy because he'll tell you exactly what you're doing wrong. He will not butter it up. He won't dress it up nicely. He's going to try to make it as bad as he possibly can because he wants to hurt you. And amazingly, he's doing you the greatest favor of all because your friends won't do that, especially if you're a strong personality because they don't want to argue with you. You're going to tell them that you're going to argue and they get tired of arguing with you so they stop telling you. Whatever you want to do, do it. I'm so we are. But when you have an enemy, he wants to give it to you. And sometimes you see with Moshe Beno and Korach rebelled against him. The first thing Moshe did is fell on his face to decide was Korach, what he was, was rebellion, was it coming from God? Was it right? And then when he ascertained that it was not, then he came against Korach. But first he looked into himself to decide whether what Korach was saying had merit. So when an enemy, when someone doesn't like you, says something, you still need to weigh it. And it's a shame that the best advice that we get 
are from those things that are negative many times and from people that don't like us. And even though they think they're hurting us, they don't realize that what they've done has made us better and stronger and helped us to take a weakness that we need to correct so that that person can't say that to us anymore. And if that's the reason why, just to make an enemy not do it, it's good enough to make us better people. Whatever tool it takes, whatever help that we need, God puts it in our way for that reason. For each one of us to say, this is who I am, is not acceptable. Who I am is where I start. Who I should be is where I hopefully I'll finish. And sometimes that comes from the negativity of life and seeing people who try to talk to you in the wrong way. And yet, you should really hug them and kiss them for all that they do. So let's hope again that we have proper mentors and we're able to learn from all their experiences, the Baal Shem Tov says, and to grow and be better people through the teachers that we have. God bless and have a good Shabbos.